Let's play Vivisector. When we last left off, the game froze. I'll try to avoid it this time. Perfect. Kurt, ты нашел трамфлойлер. Теперь я знаю твое местонахождение. Двигайся в обозначенную точку. Мы идем дальше. That's where they want us to go, but let's explore a bit. Here is a different gate. Why did you leave it open? fail at solving a dumb jumping puzzle, let me tell you something about the guy voicing Liam. He is not a voice actor, not an actor at all. He is Dmitry Puchkov, known to the Russian internet as Goblin. He is the kind of guy most internet seekers of fame want to become. Interesting, there are secret items on that fence. Fuck it, a lot of those stashes seem to require heavy abuse of the jumping physics. Anyway, Goblin. He started getting big in the 90s, running a Quake fan forum known for rude language and writing Quake 2 fanfics with his original characters. His fanfics ranged from veiled tips on deathmatch to a fully-fledged story that was published in chunks in one of the Russian gaming magazines and as a book. After that, he got even bigger, producing amateur dubs of Western movies. There were two kinds of those. Oh, fuck this. For some movies, he did a proper translation, dubbing swearing and swearing as opposed to TV safe words. Something illegal under the current Russian legislation. Better known were the mock dubs of the films like the Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Matrix, where the soundtrack was replaced by Russian pop and folk music and characters talked in crude humor and quotes from Soviet films. Those were insanely popular among the high schoolers and university freshmen. Oh, and he voiced all the characters himself, regardless of gender. But we're used to that. I've never found a way to jump off the gate without taking fall damage. Anyway, yes, we can take Elven Princess sounding like a slightly tipsy hobbit in our movies, because the former USSR discovered the VHS only in the 90s. And the video pirate dubs mostly sounded like a bored guy reading off a page of subtitles. Жуткие дела здесь творятся, да? Такому нас не учили. Ты должен продержаться. Эти четвероногие твари тупые. У нас тут уже более интересные события. Um, he did not say a word about fish. He said things are more interesting on their end. Presents for me. Thank you. So, in the 90s in Russia, for the Western movies that were not running in cinemas, you had the choice between the TV with its properly dubbed Batman and Robin and Highlander 2. Or the pirates with their die-hard and non-remastered Star Wars, dubbed by a guy with a clothespin on his nose. The choice was obvious. Why am I telling you this? Ah, Goblin. He turned into a minor celebrity of a gaming and movies expert variety. They made a game too, using his fanfic characters. You might have heard about it. The game was localized in the West as Planet Alcatraz. There is an LP of it in the archive. I've heard the localization is quite notorious. Originally, what set the Goblin's fanfics apart from the usual shit was his experience in the army service and his work in the police, including the penitentiary system. He used all that to add gritty details to the story. And now I'll save. And load, because I fucked up getting a secret. Liam said he set the destination for us, didn't he? Liam is an evil bastard. Every time I hear this, I expect VC from the bushes. Recycling, eh?
Oh, fuck. What? If you fail to jump onto the branch, the floor opens. I must say I like the human barbecue setup, especially because it won't happen again. And now, let's talk level design. As you can see, our new beacon is over there. But wait, what's this wide open path? Perhaps there is something good that way? Let's save in case we hit an invisible wall and have to walk all the way back. You can't name the save slot. Off we go. Now, eyes on the minimap. We cut to when I walked almost all the way to the shore. The map zoom changes automatically to fit the beacon. That's a new ambient noise. That slope looks climbable. The guns don't work underwater, but there are no underwater enemies anyway. I'm not even sure the oxygen is limited. Cut incoming, eyes on the minimap again. This looks like a perfect spot for a secret. Something big, like a developer's head on a pike or something. I'll also accept a new gun. Bugger. And this is why I try to avoid the fall damage. Two kisses on the rock and you lose 65 hit points. Luckily, the resistance stat will reduce the impact. I skip again to show another tempting shoreline feature. And there's the edge of the map. I don't understand this. The lake we're currently doggy paddling in is big enough to hold the lake boss fight from Resident Evil 4. Probably big enough to hold four of them at the same time. And here is just an empty section of the map they did not even bother to fence off. Oh, Kurt can't stay on the surface, you need to move him up. This happens every single time you go looking for secrets in this game. You march for a few minutes and end up lost in the wilderness. Fuck this. Back to the plot. Wait, that's not my car keys. Huh. A grenade. Into the sack it goes. Доберись до деревни. Там есть центр авторизации. Необходимо активизировать твой трансловер, иначе охрана острова тебя не распознает. До связи. Fucking online activations DRM. Before I used a third-party patch, this game was protected by Star Force. Just like about 80% of releases here 10 years ago. Our publishers used to love it. Our publishers also used to release freeware games and expansions for money. They're just greedy shits. Fine game, I'll go up the mountain path. I'm glad there are no cybernetic mountain goats in the river sector. Kurt, speed up, please. Don't be so dramatic. A change of scenery. I welcome it. I spy blue dots on the radar. Motion tracker. Gameplay mechanic device. Crouching pistol is the recipe for success. There's one more to the left. Okay, it's clear now. Here's where the game gets a little weird. Our beacon is inside the tree, also doubling as a staircase but there is a wooden fence in the way. Let's solve this problem later. For now, though... 
You know how some shooters have annoying sniper enemies, and some have annoying grenade tosses? Viva Sector offers the best of both worlds. <laughs> Why is the roof exploding? This is definitely a new natural phenomenon. There it is. Please not in the face. <laughs> Fucking cats. Okay, this thing is a grenade launcher attached to a stationary gorilla. The manual calls them Grenadilla. I hate them. The manual also says their weak point is the forearms, while in fact it's the shoulders. The manual is full of shit. Okay, see the gate? It's still closed. Let's go and solve the actual problem of this section. That Grenadilla encounter is entirely optional. Health comes first. Here is our switch. It's open. With a ship's wheel. Why? Enough of that, let's go inside for more Donkey Kong adventures. Stop torching my bum! <laughs> <laughs> 